buying a home, it's likely the most money you will ever spend at one time. Make sure you have a real estate team you can trust on your side, helping you every step of the way. Welcome back to the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show with one of the most trusted realtors in Windsor, Essex, Dan Jemis. Okay, welcome back to the show, 1235 here on AM 800. Heather Marinchat in studio with me today. Hey, Heather. Hi, Dan. Having lots of fun and uh, it's time for our legal it's segment. Time. It's time. <laughs> it's time for our legal segment with our good friend, Christian Janice from Simply Close. Hey, Christian, how are you? Hey, not bad. How are you both doing today? We're doing fantastic. Great. Lots going on. It's been a great weekend. Uh, yep. Weather-wise, we cannot complain. So uh, what's happening in the uh, good old world of uh, real estate law? So a topic that we've definitely touched on in the past, but you know what, as much as I tell everybody about these issues, they always come up, so I thought I'd cover it again, but it's the difference between the chattels and the fixtures, Uh, and yeah, you probably see it a lot. So simply put, uh, a chattel is anything that can be detached from the house, and then a fixture, the easiest way to think of it is that anything, um, if you were to flip the house upside down, anything that stays is a fixture, and anything that drops from the from you flipping it is a is a chattel i but love a great that way of putting yeah. it yeah it's a great way of putting yeah. it <laughs> it really helps you visualize <laughs> yeah and so it, uh, why it's important is because in every agreement of purchase and sale there's two things you put the chattels that are included and the fixtures that are excluded um but for whatever reason we still see uh a lot of dis- debates or disputes over for example, uh, like a TV mount. Is it a chattel or a fixture? Well, sure. it's mm-hmm. definitely a fixture. Um, so that's Detached. the easiest way to yep. think about it. Yeah. That's the easiest way to think about it. But the other thing is, and then, you know, this is the most important because as you both have seen many, many times, um, if there is something that a buyer or a buyer wants or a seller specifically does not want, regardless of whether it's a chattel or a fixture, what I say is, when in doubt, spell it out. So if Absolutely. you really want the TV mount, just put the TV mount. Because um, sometimes, you know, buyers and sellers, they may not be aware that the TV mount is a fixture and that it needs to, to stay. They just think, oh, well, it's a TV mount. I'll, I'll take it down. I had one last week where they took it down. They actually patched the walls. It was nothing crazy. But um, people are just always confused as to, oh, I thought that that was supposed to stay. Oh, I thought I could take it. And so if there's any kind of ambiguity floating shelves, cabinets, uh, things like that. Just put it in there. Just put it in the contract that you want it. We had uh, we had clients just a couple weeks ago do a final walkthrough. Uh, and on the walkthrough, they noticed that the sellers had removed all the dimmer switches. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, again, like they, they had noticed that. They're like, wait a second, these were dimmer switches. And now they just changed them all out to the basic, uh, you know, the basic switches. So they, they mm-hmm. put them back before closing. But that's just, again, one small thing that, you know, it adds up. Ring doorbells, uh, those are another common one. Sure. People always take the ring doorbells and put back the old doorbell. But if it's, uh, if it's like mounted onto the, to the house, then it's a fixture. Um, but those are things that, you know, if you see that and you want to make sure it's included as a buyer, it's always better to specifically spell it out. Or if there's something mm-hmm. as a seller, if you specifically want to take that, just put it in there. Just because, you know, these things usually work themselves out, but it's always a hassle, right? There's nothing more frustrating than as a buyer going to do your final walkthrough and seeing that things that you thought were going to be there are, are no longer there. Mm-hmm. You know, and something else that we often suggest as realtors to our sellers is, because uh, it's happened before where they'll have a, a dining room chandelier or some kind oh, of a yeah. light fixture and it's, you know, that was grandma's light fixture and I want to keep that. So right. we'll often suggest, you know what, then change it out before closing because it, our offers will often, ha- well, or usually change it out always. before listing. Before, before listing, yes. sorry. Before listing. Um, because oftentimes, you know, those those buyers are asking for all light fixtures. All the things the that they see. That we ask yep. for that, all light fixtures. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to cause confusion, just remove it. If you care about it that much, if you care about a window covering that much, then remove it before the listing. Right. So that way this, the buyer can go to the pictures and say, wait, it's in the pictures. Right. You know, yeah, I've seen blinds, window coverings. Last week I actually had one, and I don't know if you've seen this before, but you, you always put like fridge, stove, microwave, things like that. But this house actually had a kitchen in the basement, um, yes. mm. and they had fridge, stove, whatever, and they took the fridge from the basement. And when right. we brought it up to the other side, they said, we only said that we were going to leave you one fridge. We never said we were going to leave sure. you two mm-hmm. fridges. Um you know, I can be frustrating though, because a buyer, you're thinking like, "Oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna get what I see." 
the word fridge is in there, and obviously, had we put two, it would have been yep. yeah. better for no them. Issue. And, no and, and how often? How often do we do we have the issue where uh, sellers will try swapping out the appliances? Oh yeah, for different models. For different yep. models. You know yep. what? Oh, that's a newer one, so I'll go get something else. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it's important to take pictures too, because sometimes the listing pictures, depending on the angle, it might miss. Like, you know, you can't necessarily see the dishwasher; it's covered dishwasher. by like, the yeah. island or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, chattels and fixtures are always the most uh, the most commonly disputed things, I guess, because it's what you see inside the house, the contents yeah. of the house. But like TV okay. mounts are always taken. Yes, they are, and yeah. they're, they're attached. They, they're 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 a fixture. It's you know like you mentioned earlier. So okay, so let's 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 change uh, directions a little bit here. So let's assume that a buyer does a final walkthrough and everything's great. Then they close a couple of days later, the next day, and, um, and it's gone. the fridge is gone. Yep. So, you know, what is the recourse from a buyer's standpoint at that point? Always small claims court. And honestly, I think I told you guys this this week when we, when we yes. sat down and discussed this. Um, small claims court, it's meant for people to, to self-represent themselves. You don't need any type of assistance. The government has a ton of resources online. On uh, There's like a Service Ontario website that tells you exactly what to do, how to do it. And honestly, if something is wrong, all they're going to do is bounce it back and tell you how to fix it. So it's an extremely easy process. It's really accessible. And I always tell my clients that if there's any type of issues, you can bring a claim in small claims court afterwards to recover. I know it's frustrating because you have to deal with it after the fact. Um, okay, but so so what hard. happens in the case where they do a final walkthrough, the deal hasn't closed yet, and they notice that a couple of appliances are switched out or uh, a light fixture is missing? At that point, would they get a hold of their realtors uh, or would they just ignore it? Like, obviously, as realtors, we want to get it fixed for the buyers mm -hmm. before closing. Yeah, so it just depends on the type of people that you're dealing with. So, yeah, you should contact the realtor. Uh, realtor will contact the lawyer or the client can also contact the lawyer. And... As much as we can try and solve it before before closing, absolutely, that's the best course of action. If we can do some type of negotiation before closing, but as you've probably seen with the number of purchases and sales that you've had, sometimes people are very friendly when they're when they're on their way out. They'll clean the fridge, they'll mop the floors, everything's pristine. Other times, people are they're out. Like I had one a couple months ago. It was gross. Like they left cat feces, puke. Oh. You yeah. know, all this stuff. Yeah. And if that's the kind of people that you're dealing with, you know, you can almost guarantee that they're not really going to be the most approachable. I, that doesn't mean that we're not going to try. We absolutely are. Um, but if they just don't answer or they just flat out, no, 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 then you close. I say close in protest where you basically make it known that this is an issue before closing. Um, that way they can't say, oh, you didn't bring it up before closing. No, we'll, we brought it up. We brought it to your attention. And if you don't want to agree, that's fine. We can agree to disagree, and we'll we'll deal with it later. It depends on how big the issue is, too, right? Like if it's mm -hmm. something that's going to make the house unsafe, then it's a little bit different. Now, talk a little bit about the story you told us in our meeting this past week where a, a buyer uh, had opted to not close because I forget what the situation was, but it was some, some, something minute. Oh, an issue at the basement or something? Um, oh, the what, stigma was, what was that story? The house. Yes, the stigma, the stigma exactly. Yeah. yeah, so there was a fire at the house before, like way before, 10 years ago, and they found out after they signed the agreement, but the agreement didn't say anything about the stigma itself. And so, obviously, the buyer was a little bit thrown off by that. They were not very happy with what happened at the property, um, and they wanted to back out. But you can't. You, 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 the seller has no, virtually no disclosure obligations unless it's something that puts the house in a position that it's not safe to live in. So that's a very high threshold, although we talked about a case that kind of changed it with uh, the Crypto King house. Um, yes. But it, generally speaking, it's a very high threshold. It has to be something like the black mold or the electrical is like you have proof that it's not set up properly. Um, anything that could actually make it so that you couldn't live there or it wouldn't be right for you to live there. So it's a very high threshold and most issues have to be dealt with after the fact. It's no different than if I were to, you know, come down the street and key everyone's car you're not going to get recourse right away. It's something that, yeah, you have recourse to come after me for damaging your vehicle, but you still have so to. So in this in this process. scenario, 
there was um, a quote of about $25,000, I believe he said, to fix the issue. The sellers didn't agree. Um, the house did not close. This, the house went back on the market uh, and sold for less. And if I recall correctly, the sellers were sued, uh, or the buyers were, were sued. Oh, and had you're to... talking about that one. Oh, is this a different case? Oh yeah, I had two. That one was from like okay, sorry. that one was from like three years ago. Yes, so that one the house was used as a grow up, and the oh the, right, that's what the it was. Property yes. was repaired. The the client did do uh, an inspection, luckily, and uh, they just didn't like that it was a grow up, and they decided that they were going to back out. And I told them not to. They didn't want to listen to my recommendation. They backed out. They brought a case, and they lost because the house there was nothing wrong with the house anymore so the it fact that you've discovered the stigma after the fact because the house was in a state of good repair at the time that you put the offer in which luckily for the seller in that case the buyer did a home inspection so there was no issue they very simple right let's look at the home inspection report is there any issues there was no issues like so you know with grow ups some of the most common things you'll see is mold or you'll see like uh like shoddy electrical work because yes. they're not getting permits for all that extra electricity um and yeah so they they brought a claim and they the seller i believe sold for less to suit them for the difference was it which was a large mm -hmm. amount if i recall yeah. yeah oh yeah i've had a couple like that just I mean, during COVID, it wasn't as big of a deal because the housing prices yes. kept going up. But now, I mean, you're even seeing it now, like where the houses just don't hold the same value. Um, it's not as crazy as a frenzy. If somebody sees that a house didn't close, you know, I, rightfully, the new buyers try and take advantage yeah. of that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great tips today, Christian. If anyone has questions for you, uh, what's the best way to reach out to the, uh, to the team? They can email us at hello at simplyclose.ca or give us a call at 519-997-3775. Have a great weekend. You too, Christian. Thanks, That's Christian. Christian Janice, real estate lawyer with Simply Close. And uh, yeah, lots of great information. It's supposed to show you mm -hmm. how you can't just you know change your mind willy-nilly because. Right. Uh, so there you go. Holy moly. Eh? But okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and answer some listener questions. Ooh. Yes, we love those listener questions. Uh, you can keep texting them in. We've got a few already at 519-792-2559. And we'll give away the Richmond Popcorn Company gift card. You can text, uh, no, call. Call to win right now, 792-2559. You want to be caller number, Heather? Three. Caller number three. Oh, making it easy yeah, today. Yeah, easy peasy. Wow, well, Heather's <laughs> feeling nice. Caller number three, 519-792-2559 gets a gift card for the Richmond Popcorn Company. Lots more to come right here on the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show.